Uh, I'll take it. Representative Mannion, <laughs> stepping up. Thank you, Representative. Okay, uh, moving right along. And thank you, everyone, for uh, for hanging in and working with us on so getting through all these. Consent calendar on this one? No, no it's, no, it's no, 13 to 7. Okay. Okay, uh, HB 1041, the U.S. Lib a Commission to look into the U.S.S. Liberty incident. Uh, looking for a motion on that. Um, I, I motion OTP. Again, thank you. Uh, I'll second. Okay, the motion from Representative Mannion on HB 1041 is OTP, ought to pass, seconded by Representative Rollins. And, uh, okay, Representative Mannion, uh, Yep. So when these uh, men came in, uh, I had heard, when I first saw this bill filed, I, I was vaguely aware of the USS Liberty incident, but I think what I w understood was only the official story, which is that, that it was an accident and, you know, no malfeasance and the government did everything they could to investigate it. And then having all of those veterans come in here and speak and tell their story from their perspective, I understand how disconnected DC can be from like combat operations, like things happen on the ground. And uh, the guys that have been there, they know better than those guys sitting in, in the Pentagon. They don't, the guys over there, they're doing their reports, like they're just disconnected from reality. And I feel like th this goes back decades, right? This is in the sixties. And I feel like nothing's changed in 50 years. And they got like brushed over by Congress with like, they said, what was it? A five day investigation where some of these other investigations have gone on for years for next to nothing like how long did the clinton dress thing go on for right and like these men like were attacked by an ally and it took hours and hours <laughs> right it took out like the the combat like the the assault took hours and hours it was a lot more than just a mistaken identity if it was a mistaken identity it would have been a single shot and they would have flagged from my understanding these men had the U, the u.s flag flying high and it was completely ignored I don't want to, you know, assign motivations or anything behind it all. And that's what I think this committee should try to find. We may not have subpoena power against like uh, classified documents, things that the government has locked away, but I think it would be valuable to put these men in front of a committee, get all of their record, their testimony on record, because all that they have is they've been maligned by the media. They get, they're stuck. Like all, all they do is like, they're on podcasts just trying to get their truth out there. And all they want is like their day in court, so to speak. And they never got it. These men never got it. Thank you, Representative. Representative Rollins, you, you seconded it? Yes, I'd like to also speak. I'd like to take a, a moment. Uh, everybody here on this committee, had, I think, well, maybe not some of the subs, but those on the Gold Star Father. I lost my son in Iraq. <clears throat> the night before, his last night home on leave, um, we went outside, we were having a couple beers together. He asked me to make him three promises if he didn't make it home. I made him the three promises and I held to all three. Okay, then he made me a promise. The promise that made that he made me was not unique to my son, but it is unique to everyone that has worn a uniform in this country ever since the Revolutionary War. And it is unique to those men on the Liberty that were shot up that day where we lost over, it was 178 men, I think it was, and others wounded. That's a, that's a promise that we need to make back to these people that understanding this sacrifice that they make. Um, they sign on the dotted line. When you sign up for the service, you sign on the dotted line up to and including, including my own life. Okay, that's understandable. My son paid that price many, many, Several million people in history, the United States has made that sacrifice and paid that price. But for these men on this sh on that ship, they did not sign up to be sacrificial lambs to a higher government order and be left there to die and hope that they were all the boat would sink and they would all go to the bottom of the ocean. That is wrong. That is just dead wrong. I will stand by every veteran for what my son served for to my dying day, and I'll take a bullet for any, any veteran out there. I sincerely hope that everyone puts some serious consideration into voting ought to pass on this, on this bill. I know some people say, well, the timing is not good. It's not about timing. This is a simple House resolution bill just asking Washington to give them. Where the, these men have been ignored 
for 56 years, no state would ever take a resolution up like that. New Hampshire is the first state that has actually said, we will do, we will take this resolution up and we will vote on it. Those men were ecstatic. They're finally being heard. These men deserve closure, just like I had closure when my son's remains came home. I hope that you can find it in your heart, overlook other things, and to support these men who what they have been through for the last, what they went through that day, and what they've been through for the last 56 years where nobody, nobody would listen to them. And I am appalled. That, that's my saying. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Gagney. Thank you. <clears throat> I share the sentiments. I share, I got to keep my fingers to myself. I share the sentiments of these two gentlemen here. Now, I served in the 60s. I served, I got out just before this incident. Uh, I was on shipboard. I never was in combat, never did any shooting, no, no combat except ashore. <laughs> and, uh, and I know in my heart that unfortunately, this probably won't get any legs when it gets to the higher hierarchy. However, what I want for those shipmates is closure. And that's what they're looking for, closure. And I hope they get it. Uh, Representative Nader. Thank you. And Representative Rollins, I, I um, respect you more than I can ever say. And I have your son's picture hanging in my office. And I was not here for the hearing. I didn't hear what was said. What I, I, I do understand, it's my understanding that this, um, the USS Liberty was fully investigated three times and Israel already apologized decades ago. And with anti-Semitism on the rise, I fear that voting for this measure will get me labeled in the media by, as an anti-Semite. And I don't, I, I don't want to do that. So my vote does not reflect my respect for my colleagues here. Representative Finney. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not talking about you know, stuff that, 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 that's happening now. We're talking about something that happened in the 60s. And if there was bad actors in the government on the American side, they should be called out for who they are. If they sent those men to die as a, as a political pawn, then they should be held accountable, and that's what we're, that, you know, and that's what this bill is trying to do. But it only establishes a commission. We're not actually like going to the investigative process into this incident. We're just establishing a commission to gain information. So that's why we should vote for it. Representative Sherliff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. With all due respect, from my friend from Newport, uh, I'm going to join my friend from Merrimack and vote against this. And I'd like to tell the committee why. Um, First of all, if I wish this had, if they wanted a study, it was a house study and not a commission. Um, I looked through the bill because I was really torn over this. And I was in the Army at the time this happened, and, uh, and it brings back a lot of sad memories of that time. In this commission, well, first of all, both the American Legion and the VFW are opposed to the bill. And, and I belong to both organizations, and I respect what they do. My other concern, looking through this bill, they listed that the um, a group uh, known as the Council of National Interest will have a seat on this panel. Um, the executive director of the Council of National Interest is a man by the name of Phil Girardi. Phil Girardi previously served on the... Um, campaign for Palestinian rights. Uh, he was kicked off that group in 2017 because one of the bylaws of the uh, campaign for Palestinian rights is you'll do no comments as anything anti-Semitic. He wrote an, an article for a, pay, uh, for a magazine, uh, Un's Review, which the Palestinians felt to be very anti-Semitic and kicked him off of that board. His group is going to be part of those that are going to be investigating this. I wish, I wish they had never made this a commission. I am troubled by the fact that they have someone who has a Palestinian rights group kicked off their board for being anti-Semitic. I think it brings uh, dishonor to those poor veterans who served on the Liberty. 
And the fact that there are five represent five members of the legislature and eight people from outside sources on this, that means outside sources will have a lot of control over what the final outcome will be. And for that reason, you know, if there was anything to honor those people that served on this ship and to serve, honor my friend's son, I would support it. But having found out about this one connection, I cannot vote for this bill. And I thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative. I'm not sure who's, who's you, you all, okay. Uh, Representative Massimilla, go ahead. Um, I concur. I concur with what Representative Shirtliff said. And also, I, I'm afraid, I, I don't like the idea of a commission, that's for sure. Um, and I do sympathize with the people that were on the USS Liberty. I have a constituent who was on a ship that transported Agent Orange during Vietnam War. And yet the government denied that that happened. And so many of the members have come down with fatal cancers and things like that. And they can't get any recognition by the US government for medical assistance and stuff like that. And it just concerns me that if we do this and, and you all deserve to be recognized, I, I have no problem with that in some way. Um, that will open up all of the wrongs that have been done during that war where other people will seek commission type status to investigate. And that's a big concern of mine. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Uh, Representative Filiop. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was not aware of this incident prior to the testimony that we had last week. And as I was talking to other people about it who were equally unaware in the, the following week, the same word came up over and over again, which was unconscionable. And certainly what happened and the response afterwards was unconscionable. And nothing that can be done, nothing that can ever be done can take away the unconscionability of what was done or the sacrifices that were made not only by these men, but all of our veterans to whom we owe our deck that really can never be repaid. My only concern is that the central sin of government and law is to give false hope. And having sat across from clients and having to have the, the tough conversation of saying, there's nothing I can do for you. I can file a suit, but it's gonna go nowhere is a tough conversation to have. And my fear here is giving false hope for a commission that may go nowhere to lead back to where we are now and not provide the closure that is sought that the commission may seem like the way to go but state power is limited and it may be that other outcomes can provide the closure that state power cannot and that is my concern here i don't know how i'm going to vote yet and welcome to be convinced but I fear providing false hope that we end up in the same position that we are now in a couple of years. Thank you, Representative. Representative Siebert. Yeah, I echo um, the previous comment um, wholeheartedly um, about the false hope um, and how far we can actually go with this. And are we just gonna get another, you know, redacted version and not be able to get an unredacted version? Of, of events and things like that that are of national security and um you know but i just wanted to say that i was extremely honored to have been here last friday to hear everyone's stories i felt um extremely touched and um it almost brought tears to my eyes that um they were just happy to be able to speak here in front of an official committee about what they went through. And I have the utmost respect for them, their families, especially that are here today as well. Um, and that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Representative Levitt, your light's on, but, but you, your, your light's on, but you're, you didn't have your hand. Okay. Uh, Rep Representative Lloyd. Hi, thank you. Um, I was just kind of curious um, because I, I, I agree with the sentiment, sentiments that have just been shared and then with, um, with Representative Shirtliff over there as well. Um, 
are there any other options for us with this or, or with something similar to work around uh, that we could pro propose? Because again, I just don't want to um, deny these individuals uh, their ability to um, to uh, try to apply for uh, another hearing of some sort and a better investigation that satisfies what they want. Thank you, Rep Representative Lloyd. We have a motion on the floor at the moment, which we need to tend to uh, shortly. Um, to your point about uh, what other options are out there, I think that that's something that would need to be discussed or what, whatever uh, after we tend to the motion on the floor. Uh, I will say, uh, let me say this, um, this is a very unique measure. Um, it's very unusual. When this came to this committee, when I first heard of it, I, I'm old enough to remember the Six Day War in this incident, and uh, I know there was one or two Congressional Medals of Honor. Um, so when these gentlemen came from all over the country, they were calling me uh, for whatever reason, asking how to get here from Baltimore or from Missouri or from Colorado. So the fact that these guys uh, wanted to come here and testify because this, this, mo this measure was put in um, was very moving. And, um, and I told the prime sponsor ahead of time, I said, we have limited time to tend to this. I want these guys to be taken care of and I made sure that there was something downstairs where they could talk uh, once they were here. Uh, I think um, that we gave them a gift um, by giving them our ears and our eyes. Uh, I do not know how, th how this is going to, this is a very unique measure. Uh, I do not know, it's a vote your conscience measure. I, I do not know how it's going to come out, to your point. Uh, However it comes out, uh, there, there will be an option. Uh, I can tell that it's going to be a, a split vote. Don't know what it's going to be. It will go to the House, and uh, there may be something that can be done there or not. Uh, that's later. For now, we need to uh, vote on the motion on the floor. Uh, this is uh, presumably on, on YouTube, uh, and maybe the gentlemen and their families and many others are, are watching, and I think... I hope that the fact that we're paying attention to them in this fashion in ways that uh, others have not for decades, uh, I hope is a gift to them because uh, whatever happens, uh, people know, many people know about this incident who did not know about it. Uh, and yes, uh, there's some, been some wonderful uh, comments and discussion points uh, on both sides that I think are very fair. Uh, commissions, uh, you know, Representative Sherliff made some excellent points about some issues with the makeup of the commission. And we want to be careful about commissions and committing time and resources. And I think Representative Filiot's point was excellent about the false hope thing. Um, but my, my point is, this is a vote your conscience thing. We'll run the roll momentarily. Um, I want the survivors who I know are watching or will watch to know that uh, we all heard them. Uh, a lot of people are going to get smarter about this. Uh, their stories need to be remembered. Representative Rollins' son um, out of this uh, is on our minds and his spirit and memory stays alive because of this motion. That, that's something that, uh, who knew? So uh, it's a vote your conscious thing. I do not know how it's going to go. Um, those are my quick thoughts. Uh, does anyone else, uh, Representative Levitt? Thank you, Chair Moffitt. So after the debate, everybody here would agree there's some unanswered questions. That's without a doubt. I think there should be an appropriate motion made after the vote. Thank you. Uh, Representative Baum. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I have a problem with the makeup of the commission, as Representative Shirtliff mentioned. But remember, a floor amendment can be done, and also it's got to go to the Senate, where those changes could be made. But yeah, I'm 
Yeah, it's up in the air to me because yeah, I don't like the commission make up with somebody with an anti-Semitism um, conscience. So yeah, I'm. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, Representative Rollins. Yes, you said you didn't know whether anybody would be watching. I'm not sure whether they are or not, but I did contact Reverend Bryce Lockwood yesterday by email and told him that we may exec this this afternoon if we had time, and I will follow through with a phone call to him immediately after this committee is done today so he'll know where he stands and know what the count is going into the going into onto the House floor. And I'm sure he has shared it with his friends. I Thank you, Representative Rollins. Uh, any other comments? Uh, Representative Mannion. This one's real quick. The one thing I would say is like the, the anti-Semitism and the Israel thing. To me, the failure is from the United States government here more than anything. Like, I, I, that's my take here. Anything else? So I have a quick question only because of something Representative Rollins said. He said it was a resolution, but it's in fact a bill. Oh, the House bill, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my I, Correct. I it, it's it, a bill to create a commission, correct? Okay. Yeah. All right. So I think, you know, some folks may feel differently if it was a resolution versus a commission. Yeah. That That's a, a, a good point, an interesting point. If it were a resolution, that would be obviously a different dynamic than, than a House bill that would require a commission. Anything else? Okay, we need to uh, attend to the motion on the floor. The motion on the floor is uh, is OT is OTP. Mm -hmm. And uh, Madam Clerk, let's uh, run the roll on that. Okay, Representative Rollins. Yes. Representative Lundgren. No. Representative Bohm. Yes. Representative Levitt. Yes. Representative Nodder. Representative Gagney. Yes. Representative Pimonti. Yes. Representative Finney. Yes. Representative Mannion. Yes. Representative Shirtliff. No. Representative Masmilla. Representative Jack. No. Representative Carey. No. Representative Toll. Representative Rung. No. Representative Lloyd. This is not the end, um, but no. Representative O'Neill? No. Representative Siebert? No. Representative Filio? A regretful no. Okay, and the chair? The chair votes no. Seven. Yep. So seven in favor, about to pass, 13 against. So the so the OTP motion fails. We need uh, an alternate motion. From uh, Representative Levitt. Yes. No, wait. Oh. I'm sorry. You, you called me. Uh, Representative Philip, uh, go ahead. A, a procedural question. Do we have an alternative to putting it, given that this is the second year of the term, do we have an an option other than ITL for this bill, at least at this point. Uh, Representative Shirtliff, uh, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, what I would recommend is that we table any further action on this bill for now. We're going to be meeting, I believe, in a week or so. I think in the interim, if we could come up with a, uh, uh, um, a resolution simply honoring the men on the USS Liberty in their service to our country. Not get into the politics, but just thank them for their service, what they went through, and each and every member of that ship was a hero. Bring that up. Our next motion would be, we've already got the one ITL. Um, uh, move to uh, retain the other one, the, uh, any, the bill, and then bring forward this motion to... Uh, substituted with the resolution. Thank you, Representative. So the OTP motion failed. Uh, we do not have to, as I understand the procedures, we do not have to immediately uh, come up with an alter alternate 
motion. And just to say, if you want to just to vote uh, to table it for the rest of the day and talk to the clerk even and, and get his insight as to the best way to go, but for, don't take any further action today and not take up the uh, ITL. Uh, thank you, Representative Sherlift. If there has been no subsequent motion made, you suggested uh, that we com uh, table it. I, I don't know if table is the right word, but re recess discussion on yeah. this on this measure and come back to it at the next exec session. Uh, that, and that's something I can just do. Yeah. And uh, before I do that, uh, I see a hand up. Representative Levitt. I'd like to make a motion. What's your motion? To retain this bill. Yeah. We cannot so retain. The, the options uh, would be OTP having failed, we could look at an interim study option, we could look at a right. ITL option, uh, but for now, we're not gonna look at any option. We're going to come back to that. That's uh, that, uh, somebody, uh, Representative Jack. Uh, thank you, let me ask the, uh, the uh, esteemed uh, former speaker if he thinks the appropriate thing is to recess this executive session at this time. That was my suggestion, to recess, to talk with the clerk, but come, uh, we we have one more measure that we wanted to attend to. Uh, can can we attend to that measure and then you can recess the hearing on this, this on the, to, to, to our next uh, right. meeting. I think it's February second. Yes, that's uh, my intent, and that's yeah. what I will do. Is that uh, before I do that, Representative Pimani? Yeah. Yes. If we do that, we're going to have to uh, re-notice this on. Oh, it'll be in the calendar. On the calendar. Okay. Right, and that would be, it would have to be February 2nd. Okay, so my intent and my decision is that we will do exactly that. We will come back to this measure on February 2nd. It will be noticed in the calendar, and we will uh, complete our work on uh, HB 1041 on that, at that time. Uh, Mr. Speaker Emeritus, that sounds like it's, it's in order. 